Hi everyone, let's learn about the IV fluids today. Different type of IV fluids, what could be the examples for all of three of them and also when you can give those IV fluids in what situation, okay? And after that, we'll practice one NCLEX style question related to this, okay? So let's learn the content first. So we have three different types of IV fluids, hypertonic, isotonic, and hypotonic, right? So remember, in hypertonic solution, basically what happened is, this solution comes with the more salt and the less amount of water. So when you give this hypertonic solution and when it goes into the patient blood vessel, what happens is a lot of salt will be in here, right? And then because of too much salt, the water will come out from the cells and then it will go into the blood vessels, right? Now that means when a lot of water will go, extra water will come out from the cells that go into the blood vessel, the cell is going to be shrink at that time, okay? Now, this one you can easily remember, like from the hyper E, you can correlate with the enter, E for enter, E from the hyper, so that means the hypotonic solution basically enter the vessels, right? Now, always remember, as the name already indicates hyper, that means you want to think about the higher number, like high number with the hyper. So for example, if you're getting solution like 3% saline or 5% saline or 5% dextrose, 10%, they are the higher numbers, right? And these numbers we counted as an example of the hypertonic solution. But in which patient you can give the hypertonic solution? You can give this one to the patient, just remember by the chronic sock. So basically, when there is a lot of extra water, you put your sock in there to soak the extra water out of it. So from that sock, from the socks, which you put into the shoes, so from that sock, Remember, S means severe hyponatremia. You want to give this solution to the patient who has a severe hyponatremia. O, you can correlate with the overload, fluid overload. C, you can think about cerebral edema condition. K, you can think about ketosis. Okay, so this is about the hypertonic solution. Now let's talk about the isotonic solution. Isotonic basically they do have same amount of concentration in the solution the one exactly the patient body has it okay so for that reason there is no exchange between uh, the, the the amount of the water from the cell towards the blood vessel or from blood vessel towards the cell so there is no exchange it just stays there right so that's why you want to remember from the letter i isotonic it stays wherever I am right now. So I isotonic, I am right now. And in here, we have the examples like 0.9% normal saline isotonic solution, lactated vinegars, 5% dextrose in water. And how you can remember what diagnosed condition you can give this one in a bad condition. So for example, from bad word, you can remember B is like a burn patient or the blood loss. A, you can remember anaphylaxis or sepsis condition as well. And the D, you want to think about the dehydration in this case, okay? Now let's talk about the hypotonic solution hypo right now hypotonic solution remember there has a lot of water already in the solution itself and less amount of salt so when you give this solution to the patient what happened is they don't they already have lots of water that means a lot of water will go into the blood vessels and that extra water will now shift towards towards the cell and when the extra water is going into the cell, the cell size will become bigger, more swollen in that case, right? And now these ones you want to remember from the word O, hypo, O, O means out, right? So the extra water will comes out from the blood vessels and it goes into your cell, right? 
Now remember hypo o right o hypo hypo means low and low means you want to think about the lower number like lower than isotonic like lower than 0.9 percent right so like 0 0.4 0 0.33 or 0 0.2 anything lower number which will go into your hypotonic solution right now this one you want to remember in what situation you will give it something in about the dig into the fluid right so dig so d will be like decay patient will go with the hypotonic solution increased total fluid wherever you think the patient does require more amount of fluid in there you want to give maybe more total fluid uh, in there towards the patient or the gastric fluid loss in that case you can also give the hypotonic solution now i hope you understand this topic about the different types of iv fluids and where you can give it in what situation what they do exactly when they go inside the body so the next time you do not feel any confusion like which solution does what inside the body right now if you still have any question regarding the types of iv fluids feel free to put your question in the comment section below for me Okay, now let's practice an NCLEX style question related to the IV fluids, okay? So here we do have a nurse who is caring for four different patients and for which prescription should the nurse clarify the order with physician before administration? That means you're looking for something that order which you think it's incomplete or you think it's something a wrong order you want a further clarification related to something that's why you will contact the doctor okay so that means three options the three of medication order they're basically correct you don't have to do anything with them but one order is kind of wrong or incomplete which you need to find out the right answer in this case okay so let's go with all the options one by one now i'm going to solve this question with two different methods one with knowledge one without knowledge using a strategy when i say without knowledge very less knowledge required maybe in that case or no knowledge why i'm saying that because a lot of students they want to learn the strategies always ma'am if we do not have a knowledge how we can solve this type of question so let's see together with me okay so let's go one by one now the first one we have is the option is 0.45 percent normal saline uh, sorry the NaCl solution for a client with a severe gastroenteritis who has had a 12 episodes of diarrhea already and vomiting in past few hours right so now you ask yourself when someone has a lot of diarrhea or vomiting episode and it's just been few hours now what do you think what's gonna happen in that case dehydration right lots of nursing think the same way so when there is a t when you're thinking it's a dehydration and you already know now this is a low number because it's less than 0.9 do you think you want to give the hypotonic solution there this is you want to think about it now so hold on to this option because you are thinking at least isotonic solution for this patient because the patient is at the risk for the dehydration for sure in this scenario now the second one we have here is IV bolus of 1000 ml um, and it's a 0.9% again the NaCl solution for a client who is what? Anaphylaxis. Okay, I'm just going to highlight it for all of you this one. Um, this is with the anaphylaxis and this is with the diarrhea and vomiting. Okay, so anaphylaxis reaction do you think you can give the isotonic solution but as an IV bolus directly into the vein? Why not? It's an emergency, right? So definitely patient is at the risk for the um, hypotension in that case because when there is an anaphylactic reaction, the vasodilation happen inside and that vasodilation leads to the low blood pressure in that case, right? So in that case, I want to give the IV bolus isotonic solution for sure now the next one we have is IV bolus 1000 ml again it's a 0.9 percent NaCl solution but for which client DKA but the problem is not just the diagnose but they give you now a little bit higher sugar on this side right now think about it 
when there's a lot of high sugar, what's going to happen again? Risk for dehydration if you don't do anything faster. You can give the IV bolus here. Yeah, you can give it. Why not, right? Now, the last one you have is IV mannitol. And you can see it's a really higher number, 25%. And for which client? Head injury showing the sign of the increased ICP in this case. Lots of fluid is already in there, right? And if the lots of fluid is already in there, you want to take it out from that cell, make it to the shrink. This is a good idea, not a bad idea, right? Now, this is what I did the uh, solving this question related to the knowledge. Now, let's go without knowledge or less knowledge in this case, right? So, when you, let's say, go over and skin and scan these options, then you ask yourself which option you want to eliminate first. And definitely you want to eliminate that option first, which you think for sure this is cannot be the right answer because it's the right order, right? So in that case, I'm pretty sure a lot of students, they're going to take out the fourth option out, right? In this case, why? Because they're thinking many don't, like a lot of students, if they don't know many, 25% uh, and everything, but they know for sure this is going to take your fluid out from the body, right? So... Even if you have a little bit clue on this, you can easily eliminate this option first. Then, I'm pretty sure lots of students will get confused here between the IV bolus in two scenarios, right? And then can I give a, this 0.45% which is your hypotonic solution in this case, right? Now, again, you eliminate that option first which you think 100% cannot be the right answer because that is a right order which you can give it right so here you ask yourself anaphylaxis then you ask yourself is it an emergency you will be like yeah it's an emergency can i give IV bolus in case of an emergency the answer is yes this is how you can think it back again for this question and again i'm saying i'm using the second method only for those students who need it without knowledge or less knowledge okay now, if you have a good knowledge, then don't apply this method, okay? You, you use your knowledge first always. Now, then DKA, high sugar, you would be like, yeah, emergency. Let's give the bolus back again. Even if you're not sure, can I do isotonic or not? But you know for sure, isotonic is not a bad for any patient because it doesn't really do much into the body. It just have the same amount of concentration where the patient has it earlier, right? So this is how you can eliminate these two options and you, then you can reach your final answer because you want to ask yourself if somebody has a vomiting and the diarrhea episodes, right? Like does that patient need a higher amount of number or lower amount of number or the isotonic solution, right? This will take you to a clue to the answer number one which is the wrong answer in this case, okay? I hope everybody understand how to handle this question. The right answer is one. Now, if you still have a question for me related to this question or related to IV fluid topic, let me know as soon as you can in the comment section. Thank you so much.